Hi, my name is Mary. I am one of the creations of artificial intelligence. I will now present to you the video with main subject the two player games using the algorithm alpha beta pruning. Artificial intelligence can be considered the area of computer science focusing on producing machines that can engage own behaviors that humans brain think through intelligent. This ability to create intelligent machines has intrigued humans since ancient times. And today with the advent of the computer and 50 years of research into AI programming techniques, the dream of smart machines has become a reality. Researchers are creating systems which can mimic human thought, understand speech, beat the best human chess player, and countless other feats never before possible. Artificial intelligence currently has developed in a great manner and the results of this development are shown below. Cases of using everyday knowledge for well-defined and restricted environments where the restrictions in the area of the problem are known and well-defined. Perception x sight analyzing optical data, speech understanding simple languages, answering simple questions, conversations. Here is a car that really puts auto back into automobile. It's a 2006 VW Passat and is moving around this parking lot without a driver. No human is inside it and no human is steering it by remote control. Nicknamed Junior, this robot car probes its environment with rotating laser scanners which paint a 360-degree image of the surroundings 10 times a second. Then Junior decides for himself using artificial intelligence software running on powerful computers just how best to proceed along the route that has been assigned. Chromatics X movement and interaction with the environment interaction to the stimuli of the environment and handling objects. Organization of the action in order for a goal to be achieved. RoboCup promotes the transition of novel, world-class research results and technological advances from the laboratory to the real world by organizing regional and international competitions. The RoboCup competitions provide an excellent channel for the dissemination and validation of innovative concepts and approaches for autonomous robots under very challenging and adverse conditions. The benchmark challenges are carefully defined and periodically refined by the RoboCup community in order to encourage advances in important new directions. Synthesis of prototype art crafts like poems, melodies, paintings, learning through examples and experience, making mistakes in order to achieve the maximum outcome.
to player games. Alpha beta pruning. To player games are some specific problems that the evolution of the state depends on to different sets of transition operators that applied alternately. Games are an important test bed for heuristic algorithms. To personal games are more complicated than a simple puzzle because they involve an unpredictable opponent. These problems have some of their own specifications. One state displays the organization in a given time. The state space consists of all legal moves at this time. The transition operators are the legal moves. In these games are called rules. The final statements have some characteristics that make the game comes to an end. A really typical state in these games is checkmate move in chess. The true goal of two-player games is for the player to achieve the best maximum value for a move which accordingly will be the worst for his slash her opponent. In this way the algorithm creates the game tree. Alpha beta pruning is a search algorithm which seeks to decrease the number of nodes that are evaluated by the minimax algorithm in its search tree. It is an adversarial search algorithm used commonly for machine playing of two-player games tic-tac-toe, chess, go, etc. It stops completely evaluating the move when at least one possibility has been found that proves the move to be worse than a previously examined move. Such moves need not be evaluated further. When applied to a standard minimax tree, it returns the same move as minimax would, but proves away branches that cannot possibly influence the final decision. The minimax algorithm is a way of finding an optimal move in a two-player game. Alpha beta pruning is a way of finding the optimal minimax solution while avoiding searching subtrees of moves which won't be selected. In the search tree for a two-player game, there are two kinds of nodes, nodes representing your moves and nodes representing your opponent's moves. Nodes representing your moves are generally drawn as squares. To demonstrate minimax with alpha beta pruning, we use the following minimax tree as an example. For the rest of this example, I'll show only the part of the tree that's been evaluated so far or is currently being evaluated. I'll also describe the behavior as if this were a situation where you were generating the child states instead of just traversing the tree that's given to you. In that spirit, we're trying to find the best move by looking ahead to full moves. Thus we will go to a depth of 4 in the tree, then evaluate the state. At the start of the problem, you see only the current state. As for upper and lower bounds, all you know is that it's a number less than infinity and greater than negative infinity. Thus, here's what the initial situation looks like. Since the bounds still contain a valid range, we start the problem by generating the first child state, and passing along the current set of bounds. At this point our search looks like this. We're still not down to depth 4, so once again we generate the first child node and pass along our current alpha and beta values. And one more time. When we get to the first node at depth 4, we run our evaluation function on the state, and get the value 3. Thus we have this. We pass this node back to the minimum node above. Since this is a minimum node, we now know that the minimax value of this node must be less than or equal to 3. In other words, we change beta to 3. Next we generate the next child at depth 4, run our evaluation function, and return a value of 17 to the minimum node above. Since this is a minimum node and 17 is greater than 3, this child is ignored. Now we've seen all of the children of this minimum node, so we return the beta value to the max node above. Since it is a max node, we now know that its value will be greater than or equal to 3. So we change alpha to 3. We generate the next child and pass the bounds along. Since this node is not at the target depth, we generate its first child, run the evaluation function on that node, and return its value. 
Since this is a minimum node, we now know that the value of this node will be less than or equal to 2, so we change beta to 2. Admittedly, we don't know the actual value of the node. There could be a 1 or 0 or negative 100 somewhere in the other children of this node. But even if there was such a value, searching for it won't help us find the optimal solution in the search tree. The 2 alone is enough to make this subtree fruitless, so we can prune any other children and return it. That's all there is to beta pruning. Back at the parent max node, our alpha value is already 3, which is more restrictive than 2, so we don't change it. At this point we've seen all the children of this max node, so we can set its value to the final alpha value. Now we remove onto the parent minimum node. With the 3 for the first child value, we know that the value of the minimum node must be less than or equal to 3, thus we set beta to 3. Since we still have a valid range, we go on to explore the next child. We generate the max node, its first child minimum node, and finally the max node at the target depth. All along this path, we merely pass the alpha and beta bounds along. Now we return the value to the parent max node. Based on this value, we know that this max node will have a value of 15 or greater, so we set alpha to 15. Once again the alpha and beta bounds have crossed, so we can prune the rest of this node's children and return the value that exceeded the bound i.e. 15. Notice that if we had returned the beta value of the child minimum node 3 instead of the actual value 15 we wouldn't have been able to prune here. Now the parent minimum node is seen all of its children so it can select the minimum value of its children 3 and return. Finally we finished with the first child of the root max node. We now know our solution will be at least 3, so we set the alpha value to 3 and go on to the second child. Passing the alpha and beta values along as we go, we generate the second child of the root node and its first child and its first child and its first child now we are at the target depth so we call the evaluation function and get to the minimum node parent uses this value to set its beta value to 2 once again we are able to prune the other children of this node and return the value that exceeded the bound. Since this value isn't greater than the alpha bound of the parent max node, we don't change the bounds. From here, we generate the next child of the max node. Then we generate its child, which is at the target depth. We call the evaluation function and get its value of 3. The parent minimum node uses this value to set its upper bound beta to 3. Remember, the task of Minimax is to find the best move to make at the state represented by the top level max node. As it happens we finished with this node's children anyway. So we return the minimum value 3. The max node above has now seen all of its children, so it returns the maximum value of those it is seen, which is 3. This value is returned to its parent minimum node, which then has a new upper bound of 3. So it sets beta to 3. If you were to run Minimax on the list version presented at the start of the example, your Minimax would return a value from the time at deep blue, 
the computer of IBM designed for the sole role of playing chess and won against the world champion Garrett Kasparov in 1997. Artificial intelligence has taken giant steps through so brief period. Briefly chess is a game played in a board divided into 64 tiles and each player is given 16 pawns, 8 soldiers, 2 towers, 2 horses, 2 officers a queen and king with each kind of pawn having their own distinct movement on the 8x8 board. This enables the player to have different decisions for each pawn. Given we know all the rules and movements chess is a zero-sum game demonstrating that a participant can either win or lose and also considering a draw the sum is again zero. Deterministic knowing who will be the winner or either a draw and finite which always a result in given at the end of each match. Given the chess board and according to algorithmic knowledge which will be explained afterwards each move of a different pawn can yield a different result for each participant. The decision of each player for each pawn movement can be considered as a part of a tree for the current match played at the time which in the long time will yield the result. Let us consider that a game of chess was played between me and my partner. We concluded into a result and had our game recorded for reference our game if considered in a tree diagram should be something similar to this. Each decision gave away a different path and thus a different result. Such playing is a typical logic by humans which is currently used as basis for further research in artificial intelligence. Given the above information the most used algorithm in such cases is Minimax. Minimax visits each leaf of the game tree yielding the result for each path enabling us to find the best way to play the game in order to reach the better result. The most effective algorithm considered in the cases of two-player games is alpha-beta proving the fundamental algorithm to be able to conclude that the moves have a different weight or value for example negative 3. Alpha-beta proving also states that if for participant 1 the moves he makes at the whole game have a value of plus 6 then his opponent's values would be negative 6. Cast a Roth, resigned, deep blue wins. Above is a section of a game tree for tic tac toe. Each node represents a board position, and the children of each node are the legal moves from that position. To score each position, we will give each position which is favorable for player 1 a positive number, the more positive, the more favorable. Similarly, we will give each position which is favorable for player to a negative number, the more negative, the more favorable. In our tic-tac-toe example, player 1 is X, player 2 is O, and the only three scores we will have are plus 1 for a win by X, minus 1 for a win by O, and 0 for a draw. Note here that the blue scores are the only ones that can be computed by looking at the current position. To calculate the scores for the other positions, we must look ahead a few moves, perhaps by using Minimax algorithm. If the game is over in the given position, then there is nothing to compute. Minimax will simply return the score of the board. Otherwise, Minimax will go through each possible child, and by recursively calling itself evaluate each possible move. Then, the best possible move will be chosen, where best is the move leading to the board with the most positive score for player 1, and the board with the most negative score for player 2. How long does this algorithm take? For a simple game like tic-tac-toe, not too long, it is certainly possible to search all possible positions, for a game like chess or go however, the running time is prohibitively expensive. In fact, to completely search either of these games, we would first need to develop interstellar travel, as by the time we finish analyzing the move the sun will have gone nova and the earth will no longer exist. Therefore, all real computer games will search, not to the end of the game, but only a few moves ahead. 
Of course, now the program must determine whether a certain board position is good or bad for a certain lake player. This is often done using an evaluation function. This function is the key to a strong computer game. After all, it does little good to be able to look ahead 20 moves. If, after we do, we decide that the position is good for us, when in fact, it is terrible. I win. Checkmate. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.